Hey guys, welcome back to Survival Society, hanging out here on the server and the team speak, bringing you today another mod tutorial. Um, this mod tutorial is going to be about terminal expansion, the cool mod that allows you to bring in machines to automate your work and your mastering your ore sorting in game. It's just like IC2, but it's uh, a lot less cheaper and a lot easier to start off with. It also brings in a more easier to manage power system, storage as well, uh, along with decorative blocks and automatic item sorting around the place. So let's jump into this. I've laid out some blocks here just to show you what they are, right? Uh, and I'll show you all the crafting recipes as I go along with all these, but first let's have a look at the ore generation. Right? So when you load up a new world, you should find these in your world. You should find copper tin, silver, lead and ferrous. The other one that you should find is aluminium somewhere uh, but I don't think that's part of this but that is there as well, you will need that. Okay, so these are the five major ores that are found in the world which you will need to craft every single piece here. Um, also things that you will get once you start crafting these machines with these ores once you start pulverizing these ores and stuff like that, which I'll show you how it works in a while, uh, you'll end up getting some of these ores. Now, I, I don't think you'll get... You won't get that one, you won't get that one, you won't get that one, but you might get these ones out of a, a pure slight chance out of one of the machines. So, if I just grab these, I open this up. Let's see, can I get that? Yeah, so you, when you pulverize uh, furnace or sorry ferrous you have a 10% chance of getting uh, a pulverized shiny metal and once you cook that up then you get a shiny metal ingot so that's pretty cool you have a chance to get some of these and make some cool things because you do actually have to use these to make upgrades as you can see here or to make casts uh, you can do other cool stuff from there. That's not just the only bit because there is other stuff that you have to use shiny ingots for. They're just not labeled there. And then the other one that you can get by chance through machine is electrum ingot. As far as I know, you can get electrum dust. I might be wrong. As far as I know, you were able to. Oh, they must have changed it. Okay, so that's another one that you cannot get from the thing. So the shiny metal ingot seems to be the only one that you can get from the pulverizing of the ores. So with that done and dealt with, um, that's pretty cool. We will move on to the machines, right? Okay, so the machines here are these are the major key ones that everyone uses. Um, there is still some more. Uh, still need to lay these out. There's like some here that I don't use. Like that's the only one I know how to use. But like anyway, we'll get on with this. So this is the redstone furnace, right? It basically works as a normal furnace except that it works on power. Um, the maximum amount of power that it can hold is 24,000 RF. Uh, RF stands for uh, redstone flux or redstone force or something like that. Um, as far as I know anyway. I could be wrong on that. But um, once at full power, it goes at its full speed, and it can burn through stuff very quickly. So that's pretty cool. The next one is the pulverizer. Um, the pulverizer can hold up to 48,000, and that works the same as the furnace. The maximum power, the faster it goes. Now the pulverizer, when you put stuff into it, it turns it into dust. And if you put dust into the furnace, it cooks it into ingots. So on your setup, what you will want to do is you'll want to do this type of thing, so that it goes into the pulverizer first, then into the furnace. Okay. Um, right, and I also will show you this GUI here as well. Okay, so let's just take a normal one. As if you look around the block, you'll see that it has colors on it on each side, right? Even at the bottom, you'll see that there is one. Right. So if you open up the interface, there we go. And you go down to this configuration gear here on the side, you should see all the colors that you saw. 
right? Now it's kind of confusing at first if you don't know how to set this up, but it's it, it is easy at a certain time, right? So here I'll show you this. Okay, so this is the front of the furnace, no doubt you know that, right? You can't do anything with that, you can't pump stuff in, you can't pump stuff out with the front of it. Orange is for output, blue is for input, okay? So if I just shift and then click the front of the furnace, it turns everything off, right? So now the furnace can never output or take in stuff. So if I put this is orange, no, if I put this is blue, right? And I push this is orange. You'll see now that the top is inserting and the side is outputting. And that's pretty cool. Alright? But for argument's sakes, right, you will need uh just say you have a pulverizer connected here, right? So we just do the same shift and click. You'll want the input coming in from the top, you'll want the output going out from the side, and then on the furnace you want the output coming in from the middle and if you want you can have a pipe or a chest on the other side or if you're just using the two machines have it on this side right so that's pretty cool so now when the pulverizer gets um, stuff put into it from the top it'll pulverize it into dust and then it'll put it into the furnace and it will cook it up into ingots allowing you to craft more stuff as you go along and double your ores so that is pretty cool right so next we have the sawmill alright sawmill is basically you put wooden blocks in there you get double the amount of wooden planks that you get out of the wooden logs and that is basically the same you also have a chance of getting sawdust which you can use to craft into paper right so keep that in mind you can use the sawdust in paper crafting and stuff like that to save you going off looking for sugar cane and this one can hold 24,000 as well full power max speed as well okay so the induction smelter is next the induction smelter is pretty cool and um, this if you have ever messed around with railcraft if you know railcraft this um, this, this machine is actually pretty cool because it's a shortcut, right? They have implemented a thing in it for Railcraft where if you make steel in Railcraft, you have to kind of like cook the steel up in a blast furnace. Alright? And that is very tedious and time consuming because it takes so long for you to cook up even one ingot of iron or iron to make it into steel but with this it's a lot faster right so combining a couple of machines up you can get an automatic tree farm for oak you could then get a harvester you could get the harvester to cut down the trees and then to put the logs into the uh, furnace cook it up into charcoal put the charcoal into the top of the induction smelter which then you can put iron in through the top or the side or something and four charcoal and one iron will give you one ingot of steel so that is pretty cool it speeds up the process a lot faster now the induction smelter is used for a lot of other stuff um, I don't know if I can show you the recipes I can there we go so you can use sand and redstone ore to get a redstone block and some rich slag slag and ferrous ore to get three ferrous ingots with some slag and you can use eight obsidian and one lead to get yourself two hardened glass you can get pytherium dust and a ferrous ore to get two ferrous ingots which I think is terrible because you can just pulverize it That that's very deer um, you can use sand and pulverized ferrous metal to automatically cook them up very fast uh, sand and cobalt ore to get two cobalt that is actually pretty good because it's hard enough to get cobalt so as you can see there's like 42 pages of different recipes which is really cool now I mean like this machine is used as well if you saw here look uh, two endarium blend for pi and pytherium dust to make two endarium ingots 
that is that block there right that is used to craft other things here so it's used to craft in that that and that and that as well so I'll be walking you through all those in a sec but the induction smelter is a key item in terminal expansion if you really want to use it okay so that's pretty cool um, now you have the magma crystal. Magma crystal is pretty cool. It's used for making or burning up items into their individual ingot or liquid values. Right. So if you burn up redstone, you'll get destabilized redstone. Right. If you burn up netherrack, you'll get lava. If you burn up ender pearls, you get enderium blend. Uh, or no, not blend. Resonant ender, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, resonant ender. And these two machines here that you see next to each other, the magma crucible and the fluid transposer, work in contangents, right? So they they have to work together, right? Sort of thing. Now the magma crucible, if you want to use it for like lava generation or something like that, it can be done on its own. It doesn't need the fluid transposer for that. But if you want to put the liquids that you make with the magma crucible into any canisters or something like that you need the fluid transposer in order to do that because if you see here the liquid comes in from the side it gets stored here and then it gets pumped into whatever's in here if it can go in there by all rights so that's pretty cool I'll show you all these working now in a minute the next one is the glass, uh, glacial precipitator cannot say that properly this creates snow snow blocks and ice blocks and this uses water. I think the snow balls don't cost anything. The snow costs something and the ice costs something. I think. Yeah. But that's pretty cool. If you ever need snow ice to cool your reactor or um, snowballs just to fling at people, this is really cool. You can make this. Next one is the igneous extruder. It's the same as the glacial, uh, glacial precipitator. It uh, creates cobblestone, stone, and obsidian. Cobblestone just requires you to put lava in one side, water in the other. It never uses up that stuff. Stone uses up the water side, right? Not the lava side. And obsidian uses up both sides. So each piece of obsidian is a bucket. So these can hold up to four buckets. So that's pretty good. Next one is the Oculus Accumulator. Oculus Accumulator is basically a water generator. It can generate water from any source blocks that are connected to it or from the atmosphere. It pulls water primarily from the atmosphere, but it does it in a very slow rate. As you saw there in the Igneous Extruder, I don't know if you saw, there's the water container and it has 4 out of 4,000. That was created by the Oculus Accumulator because it outputs on all sides. Um, so yeah, but like you can speed up this by putting. If I get some water here, I'll show you. All right, so you can speed it up a little bit by putting water on the sides of it. I don't know if that work will it. Okay, hold on. There you go. So, you put source blocks. Now, it only needs two primarily, but I don't think it works at the bottom. So, you only need two primarily, you don't need four. But it can create water super fast, and this is basically an infinite water source. It's just like the 4x4, four four, except that you can automate the water to go somewhere. So, that's really cool. Now, let's close this up, let's clean this up, right, so now the next thing is the energetic infuser. The energetic infuser is used to power stuff up with red force. Now this was intended to be used with uh, another mod called red redstone arsenal. Um, you can also use it to power up cells. Uh, capacitors like if I go here you can use it to power up these cells if you put them in 
So if I just grab a creative one and I grab a leadstone one, put that there, put that in there, it'll start powering up the cell. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so it powers up cells, it also powers up these tools as you saw me go into a minute ago. So you, you can power up all these redstone and they power up pretty quickly and this is just basically a recharge station so that's pretty cool now that's that now the last one is the autonomous activator right the autonomous activator is basically like a player's hand it just keeps on activating all right now if it's given a redstone signal it won't work that was probably a bad idea but uh, let's see here, what can I do? We'll get a dispenser and we'll get... Yeah, I don't know if that'll work. No, okay, I need to think of a ah, statue. Give me a moment there now, guys. I will just need to find this. I know it's an open block, so let's go to the open blocks. There we go. Trophy. I had it wrong. Ah, there we go. That's what I want. So basically, it's just a player's hand. Because like, when you right click a statue, it does something. So yeah, let's just do this. Get rid of those arrows. So that's pretty cool. This thing is used for like automating. It's really interesting to use. You can set up things pretty cool. And yeah. Right, so let's move on to the next issue. Um, how do I get power to these machines? Right? They do require power. Not all of them require power. Like the glacial persis. Uh, the ice thing. I'm not going to bother saying it anymore because I can't say it. Uh, requires power to run the igneous extruder doesn't the oxygen accumulator doesn't the energetic infuser does and the autonomous activator does not so there you are it doesn't require um, power those ones don't require power but the rest do so how do I get power to my machines um, that's where these cells come in these cells are power generator or power storage right so you can store your power that you generate from one of these four dynamos that are known as engines right there you go now the best one out of these is I have to say is the magmatic because the magmatic is the easiest one to get power for or fuel for magmatic as you can get is lava Right, so the easiest way to get lava is go to the nether. The compression dynamo works with lava and water, and the reactant dynamo, I haven't got a clue what that works with. I've never used it. I think it works with lava. Or no, it might work with fuel. Yeah, I think it works with fuel. But anyway, um, yeah, so I primarily myself use the magmatic, but if you're starting off, the steam dynamos are really cool. They're used with water and coal. Okay, so you put coal in there, you put water in there, and then steam will build up here, and it'll start uh, creating power for you. Lava, all you have to do is just pump the lava in on any side, and it will build up here and start generating power straight away for you. Now, all of these machines work at 80 RF per tick. No matter what machine you're using, it does 80 RF per tick. Okay, so they're all 80, so if you think making the better one is going to give you more power, it's not. It's just going to cost you a different resource. So the best one I would recommend for everyone is to go with the Magmatic Dynamo. Or if you're starting off, just make four Steam Dynamos. That will keep you going until you can actually make yourself a Magmatic Dynamo. So there are those. So now there's four different cells, two that are redundant after a while, and two that are useful in their own sense of way. So the first one is the leadstone. The leadstone is pretty cool. It is um, used by start off players to run their basic machines before they can start using their machines to build up into the higher tier of cells. Now 
there also comes a custom with the cells there comes energy conduits to transfer your energy throughout your system now with these conduits they follow the same rules as the cells cells can only input a certain amount and output a certain amount the leadstone carry the same rule as they can only carry the same amount as they say so now they don't really say it until you pick it up so it says the leadstone energy conduit can only transfer 80 RF per tick so it'll only carry a maximum of 80 RF per tick through the pipe at one time so that is a, a very painful situation because 80 isn't enough to run complex systems that would automate everything the next one up the uh, leadstone uh, by the way does hold 400,000 RF but if you're connecting this to a quarry you can see that red bar drop down like there's no tomorrow now the next up we do have the hardened energy cell which holds 2 million RF okay and that has a 400 RF per tick input and a 400 RF per, RF per tick output and the same with the hardened energy cell the hardened energy cell is um, 400 RF per tick okay so that's pretty good next one up in no the hardened and the leadstone cell are used in contangent as well you use them to upgrade each other but you cannot use the hardened cell to bring it up to a redstone energy cell because the redstone energy cell requires you to use the magma crucible to burn up redstone to inject it into the cell frame that I'll show you in a second now I'm also going to go through the recipes there now in a sec um, so I'll just show you the recipe here of the redstone and the hardened so or the leadstone there so the leadstone is a leadstone energy cell frame there you go that's how you make that so you need four lead on the outsides glass in the centers and a block of redstone and that gives you a leadstone frame then to make it into a leadstone energy cell you need three copper and you need a redstone what the hell conduction coil which is an electromingot and two redstone electromingot is made by smelting up electron blend and electron blend is made by dust or uh, gold dust and silver dust and you get two electron blend blend per section there okay so now the redstone or the hardened energy cell uh, you need invar ingots surrounding a leadstone cell or you can do it the other way you can skip from the leadstone cell by just putting in var around here in the empty slots of that recipe but in var is made via in var blend and in var blend is two iron dust and a piece of ferrous metal ferrous metal is basically ferrous ore just pulverized up okay so that's the hardened energy cell which holds 2 million RF per tick uh, or sorry RF and you can output a 400 in and out uh, and you can adjust those levels as well so if you want more coming in than out you can set that up it goes down in ranges of 50 or if you hold shift and click the button it goes down in ranges of a thousand okay so uh, the next one up is the redstone energy cell along with its redstone energy conduit now there's only three types of conduits uh, the redstone conduit can hold up to 10,000 RF per tick and the redstone cell can output 2,000 each way um, the redstone energy cell you craft it like this so you need electrum ingots which I showed you the recipe already a redstone frame which you need energized glowstone shoved into it okay that gives you a redstone energy cell frame full and then there you go that's how you make a frame you need four hardened glass one diamond and four electrum ingots hardened glass is made with eight pulverized obsidian and one lead or eight pulverized obsidian and one lead dust doesn't matter either way it'll give you the same recipe okay so that's how you make a, a redstone energy cell and that holds 10 million RF so 
And the next one is the resonant energy cell. Resonant energy cell is a little bit harder to craft. It holds 50 million RF. It can output and input 10,000 RF per tick. And this is how you make it. You make it with four endurium ingots and a redstone cell. Okay, so the, you make the ingots like this with a pytherium dust and two endurium blend. The pytherium dust you make with coal dust, sulfur, redstone, and blaze powder. Blaze powder is from blaze rods, if you didn't know that. Okay, so let's go back into this and we show you the other part of the recipe. The endurium blend is crafted with three tin dust, one shiny metal um, dust, and one bucket of resonant ender. Right, resonant ender is when you use the magma crucible to cook up ender pearls. That's how you get resonant ender. And as I said, you have to use the fluid transposer in contingent with that to get um, it into the bucket. And that's how you craft your resin energy cell. You just put them around like that, and there you go. And that can hold 50 million, and you can use it as you wish. So that's pretty good. Now the next item here is a tesseract. A tesseract is really cool. It can transfer items, fluid, and energy through different systems. So that say you have buildcraft. Say you have like if you see over there, see the black stuff. That is oil. Say you want to get that oil from there to your base right but you don't want to run a giant pipeline that you're going to have to load all the way to your home base right you're going to want to use a tesseract a tesseract is basically uh transversing from one point to another which allows you to do it quickly only requiring you to load one chunk okay so a tesseract, let's just place it down here and we open it up. So it's confusing at the start, you're like, okay, what do I do? So this box here is your channel number. So if we just put 200, click it, right? It, it is now working on frequency 200, okay? And you can name that frequency, you can say um, test. And then if you press the plus on that, it'll go down here. And the one that has the resident ender, Surrounding it is the one that is activated. So test is 200, enter quarry is 1. Okay. So now, over here, you can see here, here's the configuration. Right, configuration is set up as default as receive only on everything. You can send items and receive them. You can send them only. You can stop it from taking items altogether. You can receive only fluid and all the same with all the rest of them. Okay. So we'll just use receive only energy just for now, right? And we'll take this over here and we'll put it at send only, okay? So we'll take two cells, right? And we'll tell it to output there on the side, okay? And then we'll take an empty cell and we'll put it over here and we'll tell it to put in from the side. And as you can see, this cell is now powering up via Tesseract because that energy is being drained there into that tesseract, it is coming through this tesseract and it is going in here. Now the tesseract is crafted like so. Uh, bronze on the outside or you can use Tinker's Alloy Ingot, if I can show you one, hold on. Give me a sec, there you go. Tinker's Alloy Ingot is basically bronze dust cooked up in a furnace. Okay, you can use it exactly the same as bronze but it doesn't work in every single recipe for bronze, so don't trust it all the way. If you want bronze, cook it up in a normal furnace, and not the thermal expansion furnace, because it won't give it to you. It'll give you Tinker's Alloy. Okay, so you need four bronze or Tinker's Alloy on the sides, you need silver on the diamond shape, and then you need the Tesseract frame full. The Tesseract frame full is the frame being filled with resin and dender, as I explained a while ago how to get. And there you go, the Tesseract frame is a diamond, four glass, and four endarium ingots, which I explained how to get a while ago. Okay, guys, so I hope this helped you. Uh, this is part one of the terminal expansion. Um, stay tuned for part two, where we go through the fluid storage, the chest storage, and the items and the fluid pipes and all that sort of stuff. And I'll also be showing the best setup for these machines as well, so that you can actually do fast automating of your items. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and please give it a like if you did, 
share it, subscribe, comment, all that sort of stuff. And we'll see you next time with part two of Terminal Expansion or with another video um, of different listing that we have on the website. Okay? Thanks, guys. Have a good one.